Question 7, you are given a figure. Looks like a sine curve. Yes, it's a sine curve. And figure 3 shows part of the curve C1 with the equation y equals 3 sine x, where x is measured in degrees. The point P and the point Q lie on C1 and are shown in figure. In the figure, if you look at the figure, you can see point P and Q. So part A state the coordinates of P and the part 2, the coordinates of Q. This question has three marks. We are given this curve, curve C1. The equation of the curve is y equals 3 sin x. It's not just sin x, it's 3 sin x. And you are given two points P and Q. We need to find the coordinates of P and Q. The question carries three marks. So if you want to solve these type of questions, which involve sine or cos or tan, first thing you need to know the basic curves, sine, cos and tan. And the second thing, you need to know the basic transformations. What will happen to the curve, what, how, the, how the curve will behave when you apply the basic transformation. This is a transformation. You are multiplying sine x by number 3. So when you multiply a function, sine or cos or tan by a certain number, or uh, when you divide by, or uh, when you add the function by some number, how the curve will be here, you need to know this. So, in order to solve this, I'm not going to be looking at this figure first, I'm going to start with basic sine x first. So, let me, let me draw a sine curve first. This is y-axis and x-axis, x and 1. So, you need to know that sine 0 is 0, so sine curve starts from 0 and it will intercept x-axis at every 180, 180, 90, 180 and let's say 270, 360, 360 plus 90 is 450 and 540. So your sine curve will look like this. It will touch at 180, 360 and 540. So this maximum point will be 1, here it will be minus 1. So this is what our sine curve will look like, sin x. The curve starts from 0 and it will intercept, it, it is a wave, wave graph and it will intercept y, x axis at every 180 interval, 180, 360, 540, 540 plus 190 etc. Now, if you multiply the function by 3, in basic transformations, you must have learned that whenever you multiply a function, let's say you have y equals f of x. And if you multiply the function by a, a times f of x, your x values remains the same. Your y values will be multiplied by a. For example, let's say I have 2 here. So if for actual value, for uh, for the normal curve, y is equal to f of x. When you substitute x is equal to 1, let's say your y value is 5. Now here, when you substitute x is equal to 1, your y value will be 2 times the f of x, 2 times the y value, which will be 10. So what I'm trying to say here, your x coordinates, the x intercept, intercept, that means where the curve intercept, the x axis will remain the same, but the y values, y values, if you take any point, the y values will be multiplied by a units. In our case, it's 3 sin x. So it will be multiplied by 3. So if you compare this curve with 3 sin x, the new curve will be if you multiply, okay, let's say this peak point, the maximum point is P of 90 degree comma 1. And your Q is here, let's say, or maybe P1, Q1. Your Q will be 540 degree comma 0. Y axis is 0. So you got two points P and Q. Even in the uh, diagram, I don't know why the Pearson, uh, when they prepare the question, they're supposed to tell us that this is the maximum point because P can be any point. You cannot just assume that it's the maximum point. P can be any. So in the question, they are supposed to say that P is the maximum point, but it's not stated there. But anyway, by looking at the curve, we take it as a maximum point. 
So okay, the, when you take sine x curve, your maximum point is 90 degree comma 1 and q is 540 comma 0. Now if we apply this transformation 3 into sine x, your new curve will be your x intercept will remain the same. Now the maximum point here 1, right? So when you apply 3 sine x, 3 into 1, it becomes 3. So let's say 3 is here. So this will be your y equals 3 sine x. y equals 3 sine x. This normal curve y sine x. This will be, so this point supposed to be 3 and your minimum point will be somewhere here minus 3. So when x is 90, your point P will be 90 degree comma 3. And Q is the same. No change because when you multiply 0 by 3, it's again 0. So uh, you don't need to look at sin x now. Just look at 3 sin x. 3 sin x. This is the 3 sin x curve. So if you know, uh, if you are given this curve, just don't try to predict the, uh, predict the coordinates of uh, P and Q. Just draw a basic curve, apply the transformation, uh, so you can see the P is 90,3. But in your exam, the question carries only 3 marks, that means we need to finish, finish uh, this whole thing by 3 minutes. So you, and there is no marks for this diagram, so you don't need to do all these things, all you can do in your sin x, you must know what is the maximum point. It's a 90 degree comma 1. That's, that's for, that is a maximum point for the sine curve. So if you apply the transformation 3 sin x, just multiply the point y coordinate by 3. P of 90 comma 3. Here also multiply the y coordinate by 3. If, if they ask about any point, let's say you are given one point here. Let's say another point with two coordinates given. They want you to find the image of this point. Uh, sorry, uh, coordinates of this point. Then uh, in your original curve, let's say your coordinates are given. Take the y coordinate, multiply it by whatever number here. So you got the coordinates already. P and Q, P is 90 comma 3 and Q is 540 0. And this question got 3 marks. Part A is over. The next part B. A different curve C2 has equation Y equals 3 sin X plus K where K is a constant. The curve C2 has a maximum y value of 10. The point R is the minimum point on C2 with the smallest positive x coordinate. State the coordinates of R. So part B, this is the curve that we are given in part A, the 3 sin x curve. Always label the graph y equals 3 sin x. Whenever you draw a graph, always label the axis and the graph. Okay, now, part B says, if we take another curve, 3x plus 3 sin x plus k. We don't know how the curve will look like. So if we take this new curve, if we apply this transformation, the maximum value of y, that means this maximum value for this curve, 3 sin x is 3, but for the new curve C2, the, for the new curve 3 sin x plus k, the maximum point, the maximum y value is 10. And R is the minimum point. Let's say for this, this is the minimum point, R dash. R1 or something. For the new curve, R is the minimum point. They want you to find the coordinates of the R for the smallest uh, value of X. Smallest value of X. For means, that, that means that you will have several minimum points on this curve. If you continue this curve, you will have one more minimum point here, let's say R2, R1, R2, etc. So for the minimum value of X means, this is the minimum value of X, 270. So they are talking about the first, the first uh, minimum point, not this one, because this X value will be larger than this. So they are basically want you to find the, uh, the first uh, minimum point. First thing, we need to apply this transformation. 3 sin x plus k. In graphs and transformation, you must have learned 
Whenever you add a number with the function, if you have a function y equals f of x, and if you add a with the function, the graph will be shifted upwards a units. If a is a negative number, in our case k, if it is a negative number, it is minus k, minus k, so the graph will be moved downwards. But in our question, it's not given whether k is positive or negative, we don't know that. So we are not sure whether the graph will be moved upwards or downwards. But we have one information, the maximum point is 10. That means the maximum point here is 3, the new maximum point is somewhere here, it's 10. We don't know the x coordinate, correct? So all we know the maximum y, y coordinate is 10. That means definitely the graph, if we move it downwards, we don't get the maximum point 10. So this graph, we cannot change the shape of the graph. Because whenever you add something with a function, you don't change the shape, you just merely move the graph up or down. So if, if you want this point to be the maximum point, the graph has to be moved upwards. So upwards, how many units we need to move? We need to move 7 units. 7 units. So the new graph will be, will have uh, the maximum point here. We don't know how the graph, where it intercepts and all, but we are moving it 7 units upwards. So this k should be 7. Because you see, from 3, the maximum point becomes 10. That means we are moving 7 units. So k is supposed to be 7, positive 7, that's why the graph is moved upwards 7 units. Now talking about minimum point, your minimum point also, your minimum point here, it's uh, let's say R1, R1 of 270 degree comma minus 3, this is minus 3, that's the minimum point. So when you move the whole, gra whole graph upwards 7 units, this also you need to move 7 units upwards. So this is 3 units, again 4 units here. So somewhere here, it will be 270 degree comma 4. So your graph will be something like this. So you are moving the whole graph upwards 7 units. So the new minimum point will be 270 degree comma 4. So the answer for this, the R will be 270 degree comma 4. I think you don't need to find the K, they just want you to find R only. So the coordinates of R is 270 degree comma 4.